Straight ahead on CCX News, a Brooklyn Center family impacted by a devastating house fire will have the latest, plus a push in Brooklyn Park for more restaurants, how city officials plan to make it happen. And the Minneapolis miracle has experienced in a crystal restaurant. CCX News starts right now. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. Uh, Brooklyn Center family is trying to pick up the pieces after a two alarm fire swept through their home. Flames broke out in the 7200 block of Camden Avenue North around 4 a.m. Sunday. And reporter Sonia Gones has the latest on the investigation. I got woke up to beeping and I heard um, screaming and yelling. Charred wood and metal are all that's left of this Brooklyn Center home. The inside gutted by flames. The smoke was just so strong, I couldn't even breathe, couldn't see anything, it was dark. Lisa Cameron and six others, including two children, were inside the home when the fire broke out. I opened my bedroom door and I got blasted by all the smoke and and I, my only instinct was to run. She says the fire started in the garage and quickly spread. All of the victims scrambled to get out. They made it with just the clothes on their back. We heard more popping and banging from the fire, and so we all just booked it to the cars. But not everyone was so lucky. Five cats died in the fire. I blame myself yeah. for not getting them out, but I didn't have time. Lisa says the pets were beloved members of the family and will be greatly missed. My daughter came here yesterday and seen her kitty, and she just... <laughs> Oh, that was so hard. Meanwhile, the family is still in shock, wondering what's next after such a devastating loss. This doesn't happen to me. It happens to other people, and, and it, I don't know what's worse. Miss seeing our lives get burned, <laughs> or the aftermath. I don't know. Now, fire officials say it's too early to determine a cause. Fire departments from West Metro, Robbinsdale, and Brooklyn Park helped to put the fire out. Crews also had to come back to the home a second time because it rekindled. Meanwhile, the family is staying at a hotel. A GoFundMe account has been set up if anybody would like to help the family. We have all that information on our website, ccxmedia.org. Mike? Uh, all right, Sonia, thank you. The Plymouth police are warning residents about a phony traffic citation scam. Residents have reported receiving emails claiming traffic cameras recorded them making a traffic violation. The email instructs residents to click on a link to pay the citation. Of course, this email is a scam. The Plymouth Police Department does not email traffic citations to residents, nor do Plymouth Police uh, use traffic cameras to issue citations. Well, Brooklyn Park is looking for ways to bring new restaurants to town, especially when it comes to independent and unique startups. We're going to try to see what we can do to help small business owners start new restaurants because we think with our diversity, we're starting to get a lot more diverse restaurants that reflect our culture of our city. Mayor Jeff Lundy says a challenge for many new startups is the fee for sewer connections. That fee is required by the Met Council, and Lundy says for larger chains, it's not a problem. But raising about $20,000 up front can be difficult for smaller businesses. People say they want non-chains. Those are the most difficult to start. And uh, so we're gonna do our best to try to make this happen. The city's Economic Development Authority will consider a new program to help reduce the high cost of connecting a restaurant to sewer services. Since some businesses were removed for the county, you know, the county Road 81 expansion, the city has credits that can be used to lower the cost of new connections. Already in place is a deferral program where small businesses can pay the sewer fee over five years. Minnesota Vikings fans are still buzzing about Sunday's miraculous comeback win against the New Orleans Saints. Now, one sports bar in Crystal, the scene went from gloom and doom to utter ecstasy in just seconds. Here's Eric Nelson. It was pandemonium. I mean, this place was packed. You couldn't fit another person in there. When Diggs caught that ball and ran in, it was just... 
It was pure purple pandemonium at Buffalo Wild Wings in Crystal on Sunday. I had one guy up on a table knocking glasses over and just super excited. The whole place just erupted. Stefan Diggs walk off touchdown catch created instant joy as Minnesota Viking fans went wild wings wild. The minute Diggs caught that ball and ran down the field, it just exploded in here. I thought the place was just gonna go, like tables were gonna get overturned. In the game's final seconds, the mood inside the sports bar changed dramatically. The purple pain turned into a purple party. I've never seen that happen in here ever. When Diggs caught Case Keenum's throw and sprinted into NFL history, it set off a chain reaction of Minnesota joy. Everybody was screaming and jumping and running around and hugging each other, and it was just an amazing moment to see as a Vikings fan. Sunday was Brielle Carmichael's first day as a server at B-Dub. We had people praying, we had people just going crazy. Carmichael believes nothing can top day one of her new job. I don't think you can get better than that. No, I was. it was good. We're glad, definitely for tips wise too, that we won. That we won. That definitely helped us out as well. Like to see another Super Bowl. I've watched the other four, and I've watched them lose four times. Rick Bordala has been a Viking fan for decades and watches every game at B Dubs. I think Keenum's just doing a fantastic job at quarterback. He reminds me of Fran Tarkenton. He thinks Minnesota is finally ready to win that coveted Super Bowl trophy. Now I'm ready to see us go all the way. feels like sometimes you're on the sidelines. In Crystal, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. Uh, after the Minneapolis miracle, fans are buying Vikings gear almost as quickly as it can be stocked on store shelves. One place to buy Vikings or Super Bowl gear is at local high V stores, including the Brooklyn Park store. They have just about everything from hats to drinkware. And since the Sunday game, dubbed the Minneapolis miracle, people have been snatching it up. Sales have increased tremendously. We got shirts in yesterday hot off the press, and I think as we were folding them, we sold at least 25. Just People were just grabbing them out of the boxes. So it has just been crazy, and it's been tremendous, and it's been awesome. Another shipment of shirts is expected today. That's Tuesday, and that includes a shirt with Minneapolis Miracle emblazoned on it. Still ahead, how teachers at a New Hope Elementary School are transforming the classroom. Plus, rivals Armstrong and Cooper take the mat for the annual Robbinsdale Rumble Wrestling match. That's later in sports. But first, relief from the Arctic chill. Average temperatures return on Wednesday. School schedules are not like they used to be, especially at a school in New Hope. No more tackling just one subject at a time. Well, now teachers combine subjects like science and music to help students learn. In today's School Spotlight, Shannon Slatton shows us what that looks like at Sonneson Elementary. We're a family. People will say that we you definitely feel the community when you come in here. At Sonneson Elementary, once a bee, always a bee. When you walk through school doors, you are family. It's about what, do you, what happens when you come into the school building and the feeling that you get. Fostering a feeling of belonging and community is intentional. Um, some school closing had happened and kids were coming from different parts of the community and um, our populations continue to change and so we worked really hard on developing a positive school culture and climate. Learning here is about educating the whole child and teaching concepts across subject areas. In this music class, students are learning science, as in sound waves and frequency. You want to do a high sound wave or low? Eventually, students will make their own instrument and exhibit it at the science fair. I think children are more engaged the more they see how it's not isolated what they're learning, that it's taking place in other areas as well, and that they uh, can combine these ideas and, and it becomes a bigger picture rather than an isolated lesson. Staff have worked hard to develop a culture of literacy here and encourage students uh -huh. to develop a lifelong I, love I of reading. In fifth grade, no students problem. are in the middle of a challenge, not just to read books, but to read across genres. Every genre, poetry, fantasy, um, nonfiction. Some of us are stuck on just reading one different genre of books. 
We got to read all different kinds. These students met us in the media center to show off the maker space. It's hands on learning. This is a growing space made possible by grant money. Every two weeks, students come here. We have a lot of great curriculum about science and engineering, but it's very prescriptive. It tells them, here's the experiment that everyone knows how it's going to, you know, the ice is going to melt if it gets hot. But we wanted to give them an opportunity to be creative. And they can by exploring new locations through virtual reality. You get to go on a field trip without e ever having to leave the school. Designing and building objects on the 3D printer. Turning the morning announcements into a student newscast or designing and building circuitry. It's not build this exact thing. It's okay, here's how you build. We'll do some examples and then build what you want. Giving students the freedom to capitalize and explore their interests keeps them engaged and ready to learn and keep learning. And that's exactly where teachers want them to be. Yes, we're about reading and writing and math and science and all those pieces. But like I said at the beginning, it's about developing that whole child. And once you're a bee, you're always a bee. And we're, um, you know, we're a family here and we're committed to that. In New Hope, Shannon Slatton, CCX News. In case you're wondering how Sonison Elementary got its name, the school is named after an editor of the Sun Post, H.O. Sonison, who was an advocate for education. It's still ahead, how a local technical college is honoring the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. But first, after a slow start, Wyzetta puts together a big rally against Hopkins in a huge girls basketball matchup. Jay Wilcox is in next with sports. I'm Jay Wilcox with sports. After getting crushed twice by Hopkins during the regular season in girls basketball last winter, Wyzetta closed the gap significantly when the teams met in the Section 6-4A final. This season, Wyzetta came into their first game with Hopkins at 15-0 and ranked second in the state, while the Royals had one loss and were ranked number three. And it's all Hopkins to start. To Layla Chocolas to Angie Hammond for two as the Royals get started. Paige Beckers with the steal here, and Hopkins goes up 14-3. Beckers throws a long pass to Raina Suggs and she scores and Hopkins is up 44-29 at halftime. But Wyzetta comes out strong in the second half. Jasmine Smiley knocks down the three-pointer here. Sophomore Olivia Arnebeck gets a couple of big buckets off the bench and this one cuts the Royals lead to 12. Mimi Schrader hits a long three for Wyzetta and the Hopkins lead shrinks even further. Then Jenna Johnson hits a three from the corner. And Wyzetta pulls to within three. And Schrader takes over down the stretch. The baseline jumper gives the Trojans a lead at 65-64. And Wyzetta goes on to win 70-66 after their strong second half. Like the girls, the boys' basketball rivalry between Wyzetta and Hopkins had been pretty one-sided in the Royals' favor for a long time. That's changed in the past couple of seasons, and Wyzetta beat Hopkins in the Section 6 final last season. Their first meeting Friday night at the Lindbergh Center. Hopkins goes inside, and Dane Zimmer powers it up for two here, and the Royals lead it 15-10. to Wyzetta counters with good shooting from the outside. Keaton Heidi knocks it down from the corner. It's 28-27 Trojans. Joe Hedstrom sets a pick to free up Kerwin Walton for the Royals, and he hits. 14 for Walton on the night. Hopkins is up by four at halftime. To the second half, a two-on-one break. Jacob Benninga to Drew Gallinson, and Wyzetta's up by one. Then Benninga's defender gets lost in the shuffle a bit. Benninga pops a long three on his way to a 27-point outing for the Trojans. But Hopkins battles back. Zeke Naji finds Walton open for three. The Royals are back in front, 57 to 55. And Hopkins is a little bigger and tougher inside. Naji fights through a double team here and scores plus a foul. Hopkins wins it over the Trojans, 77 to 70. The Maranatha Christian Academy girls basketball team is ranked number three in the state in Class 2A. They met an MCAA conference rival as the Mustangs were at home to take on Heritage Christian, both teams unbeaten in league play coming in. Jacqueline Jarnett passes to Kylie Post off the inbound. Post scores and is fouled for an early Maranatha lead. 
And a nice pass for the Eagles. Taylor shocked to Jordan Allen for two. Allen is one of four Heritage players to score in double figures as Lori Crellin's team tries to stay with Maranatha. Abby Torvey feeds a cutting Annika Simonson for two of her 19 points, but Heritage is still down by four. Brianna Smeestead hits a three-pointer, helping MCA to a 41-31 halftime lead. She scores 16 in the game. Second half action, the Mustangs tip a pass and it leads to a fast break. Post goes all the way for the layup on her way to a 20-point night. And the Mustangs continue to build on the lead. Kayla Joe Davis knocks down a pull-up jumper to put Maranatha up by 25. They go on to win it by a final of 86 to 68. In wrestling, Armstrong and Cooper are rebuilding a little bit this year. They renewed their rivalry in what turned out to be a very good Robbinsdale Rumble. Former assistant James Stanson is now the head coach for Cooper. Armstrong, though, takes the early lead. Zach Baca gets a takedown on his way to a 13-7 win over Sam Thurston at 126 pounds. It's 15-6 Armstrong. Amara Easley follows with a takedown and a 7-0 win over Peter Lee at 132 pounds, and it's 18-6 Falcons. At 152, Ben Menengay gets a takedown for Armstrong. He wins what turns into the closest match of the night, 4-2 over Terrell Barnes at 152. Cooper comes on strong, though. Moosin Omar pins Noah Lindgren just 22 seconds into the 160-pound match, and the Hawks get the comeback rolling. At 182, Craig Henry keeps the momentum for Cooper, getting the pin against Tyler Schroyer. And one match later, Cooper takes the lead. So it comes down to heavyweight. Cooper's Cedric Williams needs a pin. He does win 7-0, but Armstrong's James Ohm does his part by avoiding the pin. That allows the Falcons to hold on to beat Cooper 33-31. That's all for sports. Mike, back to you. All right, Jay, thanks. Up next, a local technical college pays tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King. We'll be right back. Well, finally, at Hennepin Technical College, a chance to learn more about the work of Dr. Martin Luther King, especially when it comes to inclusion and service. He said that that was the greatest achievement that any American ever do, is become a servant. The event was a free community luncheon, followed by a greeting card making project for seniors in Brooklyn Park and Brooklyn Center who receive meals from Meals on Wheels. And these volunteers made cards for people who might not otherwise get a birthday card. It's a small service that could help get young people involved in other ways. The global part of our students is not just the applied learning. It's who are they going to be in, the, in, in our workforce, but also in our communities. So if we're going to make the change we need to have for our communities, the service is so important. This is the third year of this community luncheon honoring Dr. King. One change this year was to hold it after the actual holiday when school is in session to involve more students. That'll do it. That's it for now. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you back here again on Wednesday, starting at 4.